Hello. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Gabriella, and I usually teach the Wednesday class at the Fishtown Library at 6.30 p.m. So we just moved this to a virtual time for now. Hopefully uh, we'll be able to start that back up in a few weeks, depending on how everything is. If you're new to Roots to Rise, Roots to Rise is a nonprofit that provides yoga and meditation throughout the city, primarily uh, to community centers and libraries, just trying to get more people access to yoga and, and meditation. All of our classes are either free, donation-based, or $5 per class. This class is a donation-based class, so um, if you take the class and, and you enjoy the class and you want to contribute to the mission, you're welcome to Venmo at Roots to Rise or go to the Facebook page or um, any of our social medias to find out ways to, to donate. Um, feel free if you want, and if not, it's okay. No one is turned away um, because, of, because of funds, so I'm excited to have you here. We will, um, just to set the container of class today, we will do a few minutes of meditation, guided meditation. We'll do about 45 to 50 minutes of practice, and then a few minutes of rest, followed by a few minutes of questions, if you have any. So um, at any point, feel free to leave, feel free to adjust as needed. Everything is an invitation, not an obligation. All right. So find a comfortable seat. Can be on a blanket or on a block or block equivalent. And legs can be crossed or you can sit on your heels, anything that's comfortable for you. Maybe remove the flesh underneath you to sit evenly. You can place your palms up for receiving or down for grounding or anything else that feels comfortable for you to your body. You can begin to allow your eyes to close or lightly soften, perhaps focusing on a space a few feet in front of you. And I invite you to listen to your breath. Perhaps even if you prefer placing your left hand on your chest, your right hand on your stomach, and just feeling how this breath is sitting with you in this moment. Notice the length of your inhales and exhales. If your breath is fast or long, if it makes you hot or cold, If it makes you feel calm or restless, just observing for yourself. No judgment here, only observation. Noticing if you feel your breath move through you in your stomach or your chest, or maybe a combination of both. And once you've made some observations about your breath, you can sit back and just listen to it. Is it quiet? Is it loud? Are you breathing through your nose or your mouth? how this breath feels to you in this moment, in this space, right now, today. Our breath is our being. It is our signal to ourselves that we are here. It moves us, it nourishes us. It allows us to be. Throughout this practice, if at any time you feel you can no longer feel, hear, sense your breath, come back to it, maybe have a seat, maybe leave the practice, and come to a place where you can feel it again. 
Today's practice, we will move through a series of back bends. The reason for this is during our climate, we may be feeling a lot of different things and there is no wrong or right way to feel. However, many of us may feel very enclosed physically, so much so that we diminish our opportunity to love each other and ourselves. The goal of today's backbending practice will physically open up our chests and our hearts so that we may in turn allow more space of gratitude, of hope, of light that we can keep and then hopefully pass on to others. I allow you to take some deeper breaths in, if that feels comfortable for you. And we will begin this practice with a collective breath. Inhale deeply. And exhale completely. And softly blink open the eyes and come to a tabletop position. You can remove your blanket. You can remove any props. And come to all fours in the tabletop position. And I apologize in advance, I'll try to do as much of the movement with you as possible, but I am in limited mobility today, so I will try to guide you through it if I'm unable to do anything with you. So just look to see that your wrists are right under your shoulders, your knees right under your hips in this neutral spine. And on an inhale, lift your left arm high to the sky and exhale, slide it underneath your right shoulder, bringing your left shoulder, left cheek to the ground. Pressing through that right hand to shift your hips back if that feels good for you or just staying here. Taking a deep breath. And then inhale, pressing through your right hand to bring yourself back up through center. And then on an inhale, lift your right arm high to the sky. Exhale, slide your right arm underneath your left, bringing your right shoulder, right cheek to the ground. If it feels good to you, maybe you walk your, right, your left hand out, crawl it out like a little spider in front, and press down through that left hand to maybe sit back a little bit. Taking a cleansing breath. And by cleansing, I mean releasing anything that is not you, that does not feel good for you in this moment. And then walk your hand back if you walked it forward, pressing through your left hand to bring yourself back up through center. Finding that table again. And then turning the inside of your elbow creases to meet, to face each other in parallel, drawing down through all of your 10 fingers into the earth, pressing down into your fingers, especially into the L shape between where they both meet, drawing your hands together without moving. Begin to press into the ground, bring your chest forward, gaze up, spreading your chest wide, your shoulders wide, and exhale, pressing away, Moving in through our cat-cow motions. Inhale, bring your chest forward. Look up for cat. Sorry, cow. I think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then press away for cat. Using your breath as a guide. Every inhale, opening up, stretching open, breathing in. And every exhale, releasing feeling that curve in your spine, really pressing away from the ground, releasing your head, your neck, anything else. Every inhale allows you to expand your chest, your gaze. Every exhale, releasing everything here. Maybe you find some alternative movements here. Maybe it'd be a hip circle. Maybe it'd be a puppy pose. 
allowing the spine to awaken anything that feels good to you. On your next inhale, we'll meet back in a neutral tabletop position. And then on an inhale, step your left foot out behind you, pause. Exhale, press back through those left toes, press back through the calf, opening that up. And then inhale, just shifting your hips forward, keeping that left foot on the ground. Inhale, step that right arm out in front of you, straight up. Exhale, lift that left foot off the ground. You're welcome to stay here, keeping your hips level. Bringing that right hip up, maybe that left hip back. Feeling that integration with your core and your spine, bringing that belly button up to your spine. Or if you're going for a little bit more sensation, maybe you want to build some more heat. Inhale, grow long from fingertips to toes, and exhale, bring that right elbow towards that left knee. Inhale, grow long, fingertips to toes, and exhale, bring that elbow towards knee. Move through your breath as a guide. Every inhale, growing long from fingertips to toes, stretching out, really reaching out, maybe for an intangible object in front of you. Exhale, curling into yourself, into your spine, really seeing if you can bring that elbow towards your knee. I say towards because it may touch, it may not. It's all about the action. That's what yoga is. Yoga is all an action, a practice about the movement, not about the final result. Move through two more of these, using your breath as a guide. And when you finish your two, we'll meet back in a neutral tabletop position. Whew, already building some heat here. Maybe move through one round of cat-cow if you feel like you need it. And on inhale, lift your right leg out behind you. Exhale, press through that right mm, foot to press through the heel to stretch through that calf. Inhale, shift your hips forward. And on an inhale, lift your left arm out in front of you. Your right foot up. Exhale, lift it up. Option always to stay here or even to lift that right foot back to the earth. But if you want more sensation here or maybe more heat, inhale, go long from toes to fingertips. Exhale, bring that left elbow towards that right knee. Inhale, grow long from fingertips to toes. And exhale, bring that elbow towards knee. Move through three more of these using your breath as a guide. Finding strength to keep you lifted from that imbalance here between that right hand and that left knee. Finding strength from your core, from your abdominals to keep yourself balanced. And then when you finish your next three, we'll meet back in that neutral tabletop position. When you get to this neutral tabletop position, walk your knees back a few inches behind you. And then shift your hips back for puppy pose. Stretching out that low back. Stretching out anything that may have just come up in that quick warm up. Just taking one breath here. And then on an inhale, come back up through center. Pressing all your hands, sorry, you only have two hands. <laughs> Pressing all your uh, fingers into the ground. Pressing your toes into the ground. Lift your knees one inch off the ground. Hold. And then shift your hips up and back. Keeping that slight, the slight or deep bend in your knees. Keeping that, bring the top of your thighs back for downward facing dog. Pedal at your feet here from side to side. Just feeling the first downward dog of this practice.
Inhale deeply. And then exhale, walk your feet towards your hands. At the middle of the mat, I'm just going to turn here so you can see me. In a forward fold here. Maybe grab opposite elbows here and just sway for a moment. Allowing your head and neck to grow heavy. To find that length here. Release your elbows if you have them clasped. Inhale for a halfway lift, flat back. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, sweep your arms up all the way up, tall mountain. And exhale, bring your hands by your side. Whew. Maybe shake out your feet for a moment, loosening it up here. Come back to mountain. See that your feet are parallel, your hips width distance apart. If you're not sure if they're hips width distance, I know Andre does this in his class often. You can take two fists and put them in between you and see that they are. If not, you're welcome to move. Then inhale, sweep your arms up, tall mountain. Exhale, bend your knees, sink your hips back for chair pose. Woo! I know. Regrets? Maybe not. Continue to breathe here in this chair pose. Every inhale, maybe finding some lift from hips to armpits. Every exhale, maybe sinking a little bit deeper. Feeling your stomach engaged, your abdominals engaged here. Inhale, grow long. Exhale, bring your palms together. Take your left elbow towards the outside of the right knee for a twist. Still sitting deep in that chair pose, still sitting back to sit down. Continuing to breathe here. Feel that hand into knee, knee into hand. Maybe they press into each other to find an additional inch here. Inhale, come back through center. And exhale, switch. Woo! Really working these knees. Continuing to breathe, continuing to sit back to sit down. Continuing to press the arm into knee, knee into elbow, elbow into knee. Find that resistance. And then inhale, come all the way up tall mountain. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale for a halfway lift, flat back. And then exhale, forward fold. Plant the hands, step back to a high plank, high push up. Always option here to put down the knees if you'd like. Exhale, uh, elbows back, chest comes forward for chaturanga. Inhale for a cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Finding your breath if you may have lost it. Or misplaced rather, never want to lose it. Misplaced. And then on your next inhale, lift your right leg high to the sky. Exhale, step it through your hands. Put your left knee down. And inhale, sweep your arms up for a low lunge crescent variation. If you would like more strength here, you're welcome to lift up that left knee off the ground. If you're looking for maybe more of a deeper stretch or just a different variation, you're welcome to put that left knee on the earth. If you have any um, knee special needs, you're welcome to pad your blanket and put it under your knee for extra support. Okay? Take what you need. Leave what you don't. Inhale here. Just allowing the stretch. And then maybe just begin to tilt back a little bit. Maybe opening the arms wider. Inhale, come back up through center. And then exhale if you um, release your arms. If you have your knee lifted off the ground, release your knee. Inhale, bring that right arm up. Exhale, bring it to your right thigh. Inhale, lift your left arm up. Exhale, bend your left foot, bring it towards your left butt cheek, I guess, and reach around for that left ankle, that left heel, 
Maybe that left article of clothing, if that's what's accessible to you. Some part of that left leg, that left foot. And once you do so, just look to feel your hip square. I can feel my right hip going like, Skrr! so bring that right hip back, maybe that left hip forward for a quad stretch here. Continuing to breathe. Maybe you shift your hips forward or back to feel more or less sensation, depending on what you're going for here. And then slowly release that left foot. Plant the hands in between that right foot. Set that right foot back to meet the left in a high plank, high push up. Exhale, bend the elbows, chest comes forward for chaturanga. Inhale up for cobra. Exhale for downward facing dog. Inhale, lift that left leg high to the sky. Exhale, step it through your hands. Bring that right knee to the earth, or you can have it lifted. Up to you. I'm going to keep mine down. Inhale, sweep your arms up for a crescent lunge or low lunge crescent variation. If you like that small tilt on the first side, just very slowly, just a minor inch back. Open up those arms, keeping those abdominals engaged, and then inhale, come back up through center, exhale, release your arms. Inhale, lift that left arm up, exhale, bring that left hand to left thigh, inhale, sweep that right arm up, exhale, bring that right foot in towards your right butt cheek, reach around for your right ankle, right foot, right article of clothing and bring it towards you. Again, maybe you physically put your left hand on your left hip. Maybe see that it's not square, wrap around it. Bring the right hip forward. Again, maybe finding some variation of shifting your hips back or forward here in terms of like a flossing motion to find more or less sensation here. Continuing to breathe through this deep stretch. One more breath here. And then exhale, slowly release that foot. Plant the hands around the left foot. Step back that left foot to that high plank. Removing your blanket if you have it. Exhale, chest comes forward, elbows back for chaturanga. Inhale up for cobra. And then exhale. Slowly press yourself up to your knees. Plot twist. So I'm going to do this facing the side because I think it'll be a little bit easier to see. Feel free to hydrate or anything as needed. We're just moving towards camel here. So what we're going to do first is put your hands on your low back. You're sitting up on your knees, planting your feet here. So your toes are planted onto the earth. And then you're going to slowly begin to open up that chest, bring the shoulders back like we do in Cobra, essentially, keeping your abdominals engaged here. And you are welcome to stay here. Maybe you lean back a little bit and maybe you feel those abdominals engaging, maybe the top of the thighs engaging. Totally fine to stay here. If you maybe want a little bit more, reach back. For your heels here for camel pose. Continuing to open up those shoulders, keeping the lower abdominals engaged. Let's not crunch out this lower back here. Opening up through the chest, keeping a slight bend in those elbows, continuing to breathe. And when you feel good here, you've had a few breaths. Slowly use your core strength to come back up. And then, where are we going from here? Exhale, sit down. Sweep around your feet. So you're sitting on the ground with your heels planted, toes up. Legs long out in front of you. 
Okay. We're going to prepare for boat pose here. You can bend your knees, feel your feet on the earth, and sit nice and tall. Bring your hands out, palms facing up, right by your knees, straight out in front of you. And staying nice and tall, begin to roll down just two inches or so until you start to feel your abdominals, your lowest abdominals engaging here. Maybe you start to feel some tension in between your thighs, some tension on your knees. Never pain, just some type of engagement here. Okay? And then, can come onto your tippy toes. Maybe you stay here. If you want more, can slowly lift your feet off the ground. Maybe you come back a little bit, but keeping this lift here, keeping that length here is totally okay. This is already working me quite a bit. If you feel like you want even more here, maybe you stretch your legs out straight in front of you. I already feel some shaking here in my core and my abdominals. Continue to breathe here. If you feel some shakiness, that's okay. If you feel some wobbliness, that's okay. Take one, two more breaths here. Really lengthening out, really releasing anything that is not you. And exhale, come back, plant the heat, uh, feet, heels, heels, feet. That's how we get heat. <laughs> Onto the ground. <laughs> Maybe you take just some windshield wipers, your hands behind you, or to the side, just some windshield wipers here. We'll move through that one more time. So I'll notice, um, how that went for the first time for you. If you felt like you want more sensation this time, maybe lean back a little further. Or if you want less sensation, maybe leave your feet on the ground. Totally up to you here. I can't see anybody, so <laughs> um, you know what's best for you and your body, and, and you decide, okay? So let's try it again. Keep your knees bent, your feet on the earth, and we'll just come up really long here, finding lots of length in our spine and our lower backs. And then inhale, press your arms out in front of you, feel that length here, nice and straight, keeping a slight bend in those elbows. And exhale, slowly begin to roll down just a few inches here. And then come to the tippy toes of your toes, heels off the ground. And if you want more here, begin to lift those feet off the ground. Woo! This is already enough for me. Maybe you stay here. If you want more, begin to straighten out your legs for more. Okay, continue to breathe here. Finding that length and that lift. Breathing. Continuing to breathe through this. Find two more breaths here. And exhale, release. Whew. That was, that was a lot. But we made it through. We made it through. Alright, let's come back around to our table here. And let's press back to the downward facing dog. <sighs> Stretching out here. Maybe puddling out. Inhale, lift the right leg high up the sky. And exhale, bring that right knee towards the outside of the right hand. Right foot down for a pigeon prep. Look over your left shoulder. See that your left leg, left foot is out behind you. Maybe walk it back. Then press all of your right toes into the ground or keep that right foot flex. Maybe widen that right knee. And then bring that left hip back, that right hip forward. And lift from your abdominals for a pigeon here. Maybe even reach around for that left foot or keep that left leg on the ground or maybe raise that right hand or bring it down 
Take one more breath here, feeling that engagement of your core, of your hips. And then exhale, you can fold over that right leg here. Breathing into that right side body. Sending the breath and energy into this opening. Noticing what, if anything, is coming up for you now. Allowing yourself to feel this deep stretch, this deep hip opener. And move through anything else if it becomes too much sensation. And then on an inhale, press your left hand by your right toes, the outside of your right toes, your right hand by the right knee. Press your left toes into the ground. Step back, well, lift up that left knee. Step back to that high plank, high push up. Exhale for Chaturanga. Inhale up for Cobra. And exhale for Downward Facing Dog. Inhale, lift that left foot high to the sky. Exhale, step that left knee towards the outside of that left hand. Left foot down. Begin to look over that right shoulder. Maybe walk that right foot back. Keeping that left foot engaged by all five toes tacking or left foot flexed. Bring that left hip back, that right hip forward. Dragging up that right knee forward, that left knee back without moving them. Beginning to engage your core by bringing that belly button in towards the spine, keeping those ribs back, those shoulders back, that head forward. And then maybe you reach around for that extra stretch here, or maybe you just lift up that left arm and hold, continuing to breathe through this hold. And then exhale, can come down over that left leg. Breathing here. Noticing if you feel any difference in sensation from the first side. Continuing to breathe. Continuing to allow that breath to move towards that left side body, opening up that left hip, maybe that left glute and allowing yourself to notice what, if anything, is coming up for you here. It is said that many times we tend to store emotions in our hips, in our glutes, in the top of our thighs. So it's okay to feel anything. That is normal. It is how we move through what we feel, we can't change what happens, only how we react. And then on your next inhale, press your right hand inside or on the outside of your left toes, your left hand inside your left knee. Press those right toes into the earth, lift up that right knee, step back to that high plank, high push up. Exhale for Chaturanga. Inhale up for Cobra, and exhale, sit back to your heels, sweep around your feet from under you, so you're in this um, feet forward, long seated position that we had at the beginning of practice, and then bend your knees, plant your feet, and then bring your hands to your behind you, bring your hands behind you, your fingers, hmm, how do I describe this? 
your wrists facing in towards you. So your hands are going to be away from each other. They're going to look like this on the mat. And they're going to be wide, um, wide like your mat. You can keep them like that, or you can completely turn them around, your heels facing your wrists, the heel of your wrist facing the heel of your feet. Option, your choice here. I think I'm going to go with the hands towards the side for this one. Press down through your feet, press down through your hands, and then slowly press up to a reverse table here. Maybe this is enough for you here. If you want even more here, straighten out that right foot, plant the foot, or straighten out the right leg, plant the foot, straighten out that left leg, plant the foot, and lift up. Breathing here. Maybe finding a spot on the ceiling to look at, to focus your gaze as you lift up from your core, from your glutes. Pressing down through your strong hands and strong feet to keep you lifted. And exhale, come down. Bring your, um, your feet back, knees bent, and begin to slowly roll onto your back. We'll move through a series of bridge poses here. So the first bridge pose I'm going to offer is an optional shoulder stretch. So if you don't want to go for the shoulder stretch, your feet are um, hips width distance apart, your knees bent. You're going to bend your elbows, bring your elbows in towards the sides of your rib cage, your hands going to be uh, fingers spread evenly apart, palms facing each other, and then you'll move to bridge from there. So I'll talk through that in a moment. So that's if you don't want the shoulder stretch. If you do want the shoulder stretch, just lift up um, your behind <laughs> and shrug your shoulders underneath you, and then clasp your hands underneath your lower back. And then keeping a slight bend in your elbows here, you can begin to press down through your pinkies and then press through your heels, your glutes to lift your hips up all the way up for bridge pose. If you chose without the shoulder stretch, now is the time to do so to press into bridge, to press through your feet, your heels, to lift up your glutes, your abdominals, opening up your chest. Pressing into the back of your head just a little bit to really open up, giving your neck space here. Giving your chest a full space to expand. Lifting up from those glutes, those thighs, those abdominals here. And if you have the shoulders stretch, slowly release your hands. And then exhale, release everything. Take your feet as wide as the mat and let your knees knock in. So that's the first bridge that we'll move through. We'll move through a few more. You're welcome to do that again. If you want to build some more heat at this time, or if you want to build some more, um, if you're looking to engage your abdominals a little bit more or your glutes a little bit more, I'll offer another one. But you you can do whatever you'd like. If you have a block, if you want a more restorative bridge, you're welcome to do so. Okay. I'm going to come back to this now. So can bring your feet back to parallel, hip lifts in the part. You can move through either of the bridges we just did. If you want more of an active bridge here, you can have your hands squeezing the um, outsides of your mat here, just down by your sides, just squeezing the mat. If you don't have a mat, just press your palms uh, face down onto your mat. And then you can stick your right foot, your right leg out long, straight behind you, and then press up for bridge pose. One-legged bridge pose. If you chose any of the other bridge pose options, you're welcome to move into this now. I'm going to go for the original bridge, but you're welcome to move through whichever you like, keeping your breath, and exhale, come down. And then if you chose the one-legged bridge the first time, you will now move through one-legged bridge on the second side. 
So stretch that left leg out long, that left foot out. And if you chose any of the other bridge alternatives, you're welcome to move through that again. And then inhale, exhale, press up. Again, I'm going to go for that both feet on the ground bridge, but welcome to do whatever you'd like. Find a few more breaths here, maybe finding some additional length by really pressing into those feet. So lift yourself up, lift up with the glute strength, the feet strength, the thigh strength, the abdominal engagement, pressing into that back of the head to so maybe give yourself that extra inch on your neck and exhale, release everything. Take your knees, oh, sorry, your feet wide, your knees in towards each other. You're welcome to take your arms out to a T or to goalpost arms. And then take your feet hip width distance apart again and begin to windshield wipe your legs from side to side. Releasing anything else that may have come up in that low back. Releasing any tension, any stress. The next time your knees fall to the right, you can let them stay there. Maybe your head falls towards the left. Maybe your right foot comes on top of your left thigh. breathing. Allowing the breath to slow down. Allowing your body to begin releasing anything here. Inhale, come back up through center. Exhale, let your knees fall towards the left. Maybe your head falls towards the right. You're welcome to put your left foot onto your right thigh if you want more grounding here. Feeling your breath grow deep and heavy. And inhale, come back through center. And then bring your knees in towards your chest, wrap your hands around your shins, maybe rock back and forth a little bit. Giving yourself a moment of grace. If happy baby feels comfortable to you right now, you're welcome to take it. This would be knees spread, grabbing onto your feet or ankle. And then you're welcome to move into anything else that feels good for you. If there's any pose that was not offered during this practice that you need prior to our final resting pose of Shavasana, you're welcome to take it. I'll offer a few variations of Shavasana tonight. The first, you're welcome to take a more traditional Shavasana, which would be your legs on out in front of you, your arms by your side. Another option for Shavasana here would be your heels and toes touching each other and your knees spread wide. Another option for Shavasana would be if you're by a wall, to sit at the edge of the wall, lift your heels, press into the wall, and just let your legs rest on the wall. Up to you, whatever feels good for you in this moment right now for your body. And maybe you take a few different ones, that's fine. But wherever you would like to spend the next few minutes in a guided Shavasana, you're welcome to do so. I personally am going to take my heels together, knees wide. I'll be guiding through this Shavasana. You're welcome to tune me out at any time. It is part of a trauma-centered approach that I am trying um, to reduce space in between 
thoughts, but you're welcome to tune me out if you would like. If not, feel free to join in. Find your comfortable pose, whether that be legs long or knees wide or any other pose that feels good for you in this moment. And begin to find yourself grow heavy on the mat. Feel your arms and feet and sit bone begin to melt into the mat, feeling your eyelids grow heavy. Maybe they close or they focus on a spot on the ceiling to rest. Listening to the length of your inhales and exhales here. Allowing your breath to become deeper. If that feels good to you. Releasing any tension starting at your forehead. Moving down to your jaw, maybe noticing if your tongue is resting on the roof of your mouth, if your teeth are clenched, releasing anything there. Coming down to your shoulders, allowing them to come off of your ears and melt away into your mat. Feeling them become heavy. Allowing the same to happen for your elbows and your wrists and your fingers. Coming down to your chest. Feeling it rise and fall with your breath. Feeling the same for your stomach and your belly. Coming down to your hips and your sits bones here. Allowing them to rest evenly on the earth. Making any adjustments if necessary to allow yourself to fall evenly onto the mat. Doing the same for your knees and any other part of your leg as we approach the ankles. Regardless of what position you are here in Shavasana, your feet and your ankles are heavy. You can begin to maybe feel their weight wherever they are. As your body melts into the earth, as you begin to find yourself growing heavy with each passing breath, continuing to breathe and continuing to allow that breath move through your body. At this point, maybe experimenting with allowing your inhales to come through your nose and maybe exhaling through your mouth quietly or loudly if that feels good to you. Finding anything else that you need to allow yourself to completely rest for the next 30 seconds. before we can slowly come back together and close out the remaining of our practice.
And then slowly begin to invite a deeper breath into your body if that feels good to you. If you have your knees wide, begin to bring your knees in back to center. Maybe begin to stretch up and over your arms, stretch your arms up overhead. Perhaps wiggling your fingers or your toes. And rolling to your favorite side, pausing for a moment of gratitude, of reflection, thanking yourself for doing something kind for your body. And when you've taken that moment of gratitude, of reflection, you can slowly press yourself up into a comfortable seated position. Perhaps it's the same one that we began our class with today, or maybe not the end of practice, there is a different position you prefer. And when you arrive there, you can keep your eyes closed or lightly focused if that feels comfortable to you. You may press your left hand or rest your left hand on your chest, your right hand on your stomach and observe your breath. <laughs> Notice the length of the inhale and exhale here. Notice if it has been any different since the start of this practice. If you feel any difference in how you have come to this space, how you sit, how your body feels, maybe doing a quick scan to notice if one side feels longer than the other, if you feel a sense of relaxation, or maybe something came up for you during this practice that is all normal. We are humans with emotions, and what we feel is valid. Notice how your breath feels. Does it feel fast or slow? Does it feel heavy or light? How does it sound? Is it quiet or loud? Are you primarily breathing through your nose or your mouth? Is it hot? Is it cold? Is it making you sweat or put on a sweatshirt? Just notice how you feel at the end of our time together from where you began. There is no good or bad way to feel, solely your own observation. We will end this class the way we began, with a collective breath. Inhale deeply, and exhale together. Thank you so much for coming to class today. I will remain for the next few minutes. If there are any questions, please stay healthy and safe. Thank you.